Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, we are going to discuss about physical mapping and the types of the physical mapping, right? And in the previous video, I have explained you about the gene mapping and the types of the gene mapping. And the first one, I have explained you about linkage mapping. And today, we are going to discuss about physical mapping. So actually, what is linkage mapping, which I have said you? So linkage mapping is mainly used to determine the location of one gene corresponding to the other gene. But the exact location as well as the distance which is present between the both of the genes cannot be determined by the using that linkage mapping. But by using this physical mapping, we can determine the distance which is present between the both the genes and we can also determine the locus, I mean the location of the gene, right? So physical mapping can determine the exact location and the distance which is present between the genes on the chromosomes, right? So if you understand the concept of the linkage mapping, then you can understand the concept of the chromosome and how the crossing over takes place in the meiosis process, right? So the link will be given in the description box. So if you watch that video, then you can understand what is meant by linkage mapping, actually what is meant by this gene mapping. And some of the most important techniques which is mainly used in physical mapping are restriction mapping, fluorescence, fluorescent incentive hybridization which is shortly abbreviated as FISH and sequence tagged site mapping, STS mapping which is also called as STS mapping. So in this video we are going to discuss about restriction mapping in detail. So now let us discuss about restriction mapping. Restriction mapping is a method used to map an unknown segment of DNA by breaking it into pieces and then identifying the locations of the break points, right? So uh, normally how this DNA will get broken into the pieces by using the restriction enzymes. So these restriction enzymes will bind to the particular sites of the DNA and those sites are called as restriction sites. And once these restriction enzymes will bind to the restriction sites of the DNA, then it will get broken into pieces. And the total mechanism of the restriction enzymes has already been explained and the link will be given in the description box. And once if you watch that video, then you can understand the concept of the restriction enzymes as well as the mechanism of the restriction enzymes. Right. So for this restriction mapping, restriction enzymes are highly used to understand the concept of the restriction mapping and also to perform this restriction mapping. And even the gel electrophoresis method is also being applied for this restriction mapping to know the distance which is present between the both of the genes. Right. And the genes here are nothing but the traits. Right. And now let us see the concept of this restriction mapping. Right. So now let us consider a plasmid DNA of a bacteria. So let us consider this is a plasmid DNA which is circular in form, which is, which is also called as circular DNA, right? So the plasmid is also called as circular DNA. Let us consider this as a circular DNA. And now here this circular DNA is consists of 12 base pairs. That's nothing but it consists of 12 nucleotide base pairs, right? So here which I have mentioned are nothing but the uh, numbers of the nucleotide. This is first nucleotide, second nucleotide, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth nucleotide, eleventh nucleotide as well as the twelfth nucleotide. So in this way 12 nucleotides will be arranged in this nucleic acid. I mean in this DNA, circular DNA, right? And now here the restriction enzymes which are going to apply are restriction enzyme A as well as the restriction enzyme B. And the restriction enzyme A are two. There are two restriction enzymes A and only one restriction enzyme B. And we are also going to take in the second case. Uh, what is the second case? I am going to explain to you later of this completion of this first case. So let us consider this as a first case. Right. So normally this is a circular DNA which consists of 12 base pairs. Right. And now what you are going to do is that let us apply this restriction enzyme A, both the restriction enzyme A at the particular restriction site. And let us consider this fifth nucleotide base pair is a restriction site and the eighth nucleotide base pair is a restriction site. And in this both restriction sites, you are going to add the restriction enzyme A. So at the fifth at the fifth base pair, you are going to add the restriction enzyme A and at the eighth base pair also, you are going to add the restriction enzyme A. Now, after adding this restriction enzymes, then this uh, what is the main function of the restriction enzyme which I have said you the DNA will get broken down into fragments, right? So once this both restriction enzymes has been added to this DNA, then how many base pairs, sorry, how many fragments will be formed of this DNA? Let us see enough. So as we have added here two restriction enzymes, so this is a one of the fragment which you are going to obtain and this, this part will be another part of the fragment which are going to obtain. So how many fragments will be obtained? Two. Right. So if you add two restriction enzymes, then two fragments will be obtained. So as we have added at the fifth base pair as well as the eighth base pair, then two fragments will be obtained. So from fifth to eighth, I mean this whole DNA is one of the fragment and the remaining this part will be another fragment. Right. So enough. Let us consider a gel electrophoresis method. So uh, to know about the description of this uh, gel electrophoresis, normally the electrophoresis is a method which is mainly used uh, and the electricity is also applied to it such that we can also find the distance which is present between the nucleotides. 
so this will be your agarose gel right and in this agarose gel the negative electrode will be present and the positive electrode this is called as a positive electrode the positive electrode will be present as well as a negative electrode will be present and now what you are going to do you are going to place this dna sample along with the restriction enzymes such that the fragments will get broken down right and now we are going to place those fragments into this uh, into this appropriate section of restriction enzymes let us say these are the wells here three wells are present so this is first well this is second well and as well as this is called as a third well and in the first well you are going to add the uh, fragments which are based on the restriction enzyme a and here you are going to add the fragments which are based on the restriction enzyme b and in the third well you are going to add both of the restriction enzymes i mean the restriction enzyme b as well as the restriction enzyme a you are going to add both of the restriction enzymes such that you are going to obtain the result by performing this gel electrophoresis method and now electricity power will be applied the voltage power will be applied to it and once the voltage or as once the electricity power is supplied then the fragments will start moving from the negative direction to the positive direction that's nothing but from the negative electrode to the positive electrode right so the fragments will move towards the positive direction towards the positive electrode as i have said you right important point which you people have to remember is that if the dna fragment is small in size then it can move fastly towards the positive electrode that's nothing but it can move fastly towards the down direction positive electrode and if the dna fragment is large in size then it cannot move fastly towards the positive electrode it will stuck at a particular point so how you can say the dna fragment is small in size and how you can say the dna fragment is large in size so the, the dna fragment consists of few nucleotides only few nucleated base pairs then we can say that nucleotide is small in size and how you can consider the nucleotide is large in size if it consists of more number of nucleated base pairs then we can consider it as a large in size right so these are all of these are so here 12 11 10 9 i have mentioned here the numbers right so it will be present in the gel, electro, gel electrophoresis method and if you see in the agarose gel uh, here the numbers will be present in such a way that what are these called as these are called as a nucleotide base pairs so here i have mentioned right same we are going to represent here 12 11 10 9 8 all of these are nothing but the nucleotide base pair count so if the fragment which are going to obtain is consists of six base pairs then at the particular point of six uh, the nucleotide will get stopped because the size of the nucleotide consists of only six base pairs six nucleotide base pairs so I, if i if i'm showing you the example then you can understand here let us consider this is a dna plasmid where it consists of 12 base pairs i have said you and now here uh, two restriction enzymes has been added at the two particular restriction sites at the fifth site as well as the eighth base pair site right so now what will happen now the restriction enzymes will perform its mechanism such that the dna fragments will be obtained so how many dna fragments has been obtained i have said you two dna fragments so this will be your first dna fragment and this will be your second dna fragment right so if now you count the nucleotides which are present in the dna fragment so from here to here this is one of the dna strand right so now count the nucleotides how many nucleotides are present over here so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so 9 nucleotides are present in the first dna fragment right and now here at the min at the number of 9 you are going to draw this right so even if you see the practically then if you add the strand here then it will stop at the particular point called as 9 why it consists of only 9 nucleotide base pairs so the size of this dna fragment is 9 nucleotide base pairs so it will stop at a particular point called as 9 and at this well only because we are going in this well we are going to add the restriction enzyme a such that uh, at the particular point of 9 we are going to stop this and itself will stop because it consists of only 9 nucleated base pairs right and now if you count the second fragment as i have said you the two dna fragments has been obtained and the first dna fragment has been obtained and it is plotted and now coming to the second dna fragment it consists of one two three so it consists of only three nucleotide base pairs that's nothing but which is small in size when compared to that of this dna fragment so if you see here this dna fragment is large in size right and now this dna fragment is small in size which consists of only three nucleotide base pairs as we have counted one two three it consists of only three nucleotide base pairs so we are going to plot at the third point right so once if you add this fragment over here then it stops at a particular point is called as three because it consists of only three nucleotide base pairs which is small in size right so now you have understood the concept over here right so now coming to this b if you add the restriction enzyme b at the site of 12th base pair then what will happen we have added only one restriction enzyme right that's nothing but restriction enzyme b 
we have added only a part uh, one particular restriction site then what will happen then the only one dna strand will be obtained that's nothing but the whole dna fragment will be obtained only one right because here we have uh, added this restriction site only one restriction enzyme has been added to that particular site such that only one dna fragment will be obtained and the dna fragment will consist of 12 base pairs naturally right so at the 12th base pair itself this uh, fragment will get stopped it will not get migrated towards a positive electrode because it is large in size that's nothing but which consists of 12 base pairs so all base pairs will be present because uh, here here we have added the restriction enzyme which cuts this uh, particular base pair such that only 12 base pairs will be present the total nucleotide base pairs will be present in the total dna strand and the dna strand consists of the 12 base pairs so it will stop at the particular site called as 12 right it will not get migrated towards the positive electrode and now in this next to, well what you are going to do is that you are going to add the restriction enzyme a as well as the restriction enzyme b at a time remember at a time you are going to add this restriction enzyme a as well as the restriction enzyme b right so now what you are going to do let us see now so now again you are going to take a 12 base pair nucleotide uh, dna right circular dna and now what you are going to do you are going to add the restriction enzyme a two restriction enzymes has been present over here right so you are going to add the restriction enzyme a at the fifth base pair and you are going to add the restriction enzyme a at the eighth base pair along with this you are going to add the restriction enzyme b at the twelfth base pair i have mentioned you at a time at a time you are going to add right and if you see the case of this a and b you are you have added firstly a and then again you are going to take another a DNA fragment and you are going to add this B like that you have done but here A and B will be added at a time at a single in a single DNA right and here consists of 12 base pairs and the three restriction enzymes has been added at the three particular three restriction sites and then what will happen now how many fragments will be obtained three fragments will be obtained so now let us count so this is one of the fragment right and now this is the second fragment and now this will be a third fragment right it cuts at the three particular portions such that it forms three dna strands so now let us let us count each of these strand i mean the how many base pairs are present in each of the strand so now firstly let us count this strand right it consists of one two three four five so five nucleated base pairs it is, is present in this particular dna strand at the first dna strand so at the five we have mentioned here so this is the DNA which has been migrated towards positive nucleotide and positive uh, electrode such that it has been stopped at the point called as phi. That's nothing but at the phi, it consists of only 5 base pairs. We have counted over here, right? And now coming to the second DNA fragment, now, we, now let us count it. 1, 2, 3, 4. Only 4 nucleated base pairs has been present, so it will stop at the point of 4. And now let us consider this, this is the third fragment and now you are going to count it. First, second, Third, only three nucleotides, uh, nucleotides are being present over here, so it will stop at the particular point is called as three, right? So all of these three fragments will be added in this well, and then it will start migrating towards the positive electrode, and it will stop at a particular site because depends upon it, depend upon its size, right? So this is first case, and now coming to considering the second case. So in the second case, what you are going to do is that you are going to take the circular DNA, which consists of twenty base pairs, right? How much size of the DNA is present? 20 base pair size, which is circular in form. So as I have mentioned here, this is a 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th nucleated base pair, 6th nucleated base pair, 7th nucleated base pair in this way, totally 19 nucleotides as well as the 20th nucleotide. So 20 nucleotides will be present, right, in this uh, particular type of DNA, circular DNA, right? And this is a plasmid, don't forget it. And now here, what you are going to do is that in the same way you are going to add the two restriction enzymes, restriction enzyme A as well as the restriction enzyme B, right? And here we have took the restriction enzyme B three times. So we have added this restriction enzyme B at the 14th base pair, 10th base pair as well as the 4th base pair. And we have added only one restriction enzyme A that's nothing but at the particular point called as 28th base pair so this is the restriction site this will be your restriction site and this is your restriction site and at the 14th also the restriction site will be present and in this restriction sites particular uh, restriction enzymes will be placed over there such that it forms the dna fragments right so firstly what you are going to do in the first well you are going to place the restriction enzyme a only restriction enzyme a right not b and not both together only restriction enzyme a you are going to place it as the restriction enzyme A, you have added only one restriction enzyme A that's nothing but at the particular 28th site, then what will happen? Then it will broken down only in the one fragment. Only one fragment will be obtained because we have 
added only one restriction enzyme it will bind it to the only one restriction site and it will obtain only one dna fragment and that dna fragment will be consists of 20 nucleated base pairs which is long which is large in size so it will not move towards a positive electrode and it will get stuck over at the 28th point right because it consists of 20 nucleated base pairs which is large in size it cannot move towards the positive direction right so we have completed about the a restriction enzyme a and what is the performance which is which has been done by the restriction enzyme a and now let us say let us take the second well yeah now let us take the second well which is called as a b and now what you are going to do here here you are going to add the restriction enzyme b right so how many restriction enzymes has been added over here three restriction enzymes has been added at particular restriction sites so what are those particular restriction sites fourth nucleated base pair 5th, 10th nucleated base pair as well as the 14th nucleated base pairs. So at the 3 nucleated base pairs, the restriction sites has been uh, present such that the restriction enzymes will be added upon there. So wonder what will happen? How many fragments will be obtained? 3 fragments will be obtained. Half let us see. So this will be your first DNA fragment and this will be your second DNA fragment and now here this will be your third DNA fragment. Right? So it consists of 3 fragments. So this is one of the most important point you people have to remember. And now let us count the nucleated base pairs. How many nucleated base pairs has been present over here? So this so totally three fragments has been formed, right? So let us see how many nucleated base pairs is present in the first DNA fragment. So let let us count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10. So totally 10 nucleated base pairs has been present. So if you add that fragment over here, then it stops at a particular point called as 10 because it consists of 10 nucleated base pairs. The size of this DNA fragment is 10 nucleated base pairs. And now let us take the second DNA fragment. Let us count the nucleotides which are present in it. 1, 2, 3, 4. So totally 4 nucleotides are present. So we have mentioned here 4. I mean, uh, it will be stuck over at the fourth point because it consists of four nucleated base pairs and now coming to the third one let us count one two three four five six so totally six nucleotides has been present over here so the size of the dna fragment is six nucleated base pairs so it will stuck at the point of six so i think you are understanding the concept right and now coming to the third situation i mean the third value you are going to add the restriction enzyme a as well as the restriction enzyme b at a time at the same time Right. So now we are going to take again a 20 nucleated base pair uh, long of uh, circular DNA and then you are going to add the restriction enzyme A and the restriction enzyme B at a time. So three restriction enzyme B will be added at a time as well as the uh, restriction enzyme A will also be added at a time. So both of these uh, will be added at a time such that how many strands will be obtained now? Four strands will be obtained. So this is your first strand, this will be your second strand, third strand as well as fourth strand. So totally four strands will be obtained. Right. So now if you see let us count now first to first stand one two three four five six so totally six uh, nucleated base pairs has been present in this first stand so i have mentioned here don't get confused here see properly this is your first stand the first one which i have drawn is nothing but the first stand which consists of six nucleated base pairs and now coming to the second one one two three four four nucleated base pairs has been present so it has been stuck over at the fourth point right it is small in size so it moves towards the positive direction positive electrode and it will stop at the fourth nucleated base pair point and now again coming to the third segment third dna segment let us count here one two three four five six so totally six nucleotides has been present over here so again at the six nucleated base pair it will stuck over there the dna fragment will get stuck at the sixth nucleated base pair so that's nothing but two uh, new two dna fragments has been stuck at the same sixth base pair right at the sixth point itself because it consists of six nucleated base pairs and now again coming to this again here also four nucleated base pairs has been present in this dna fragment and again the fourth dna fragment will also be placed at the fourth point i mean it moves towards the fourth point itself right because how many normally how many uh, dna fragments has been obtained here four dna fragments has been obtained because we are going to add the restriction enzyme a and the restriction enzyme b both at a time right so this is a concept which you have to understand in this restriction mapping right so by this we can easily estimate not only estimate we can easily uh, determine the exact location as well as the distance which is present between both of the genes right so thank you for watching this video if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box thank you